Hello fellow Titan Quest fans! In this video I go over all the most important things that the developers announced in their monthly updates. Stay tuned to learn all the features of the upcoming game, Titan Quest 2. Release date. The most pressing question every Titan Quest fan is asking themselves is this. When will the game come out? The latest piece of information concerning a possible release date of the game has just been dropped at the games convention called Gamescom, which will take place on August 21st in Germany this year, Titan Quest 2 will be playable for the attendance of the convention. This is a huge deal, because this means that at least some parts of the game will be ready to play, possibly the start of the game. I would assume that the developers need some more time to put together all the other content, such as the later acts of the game. It also means that many game mechanics are already good to go on the 21st of August. My latest speculation about the release date was September 2024. I think my assumption was accurate, but I wouldn't be surprised if the game came out a month or two later, in October or November 2024. So in my estimate the release date of Titan Quest 2 will be September, October or November this year. Good developer, funded by 2.5 million euro. Grimlaw Games is the game developer studio that is working on Titan Quest 2. Being a German studio, they have received funding by the German Ministry of Support, 2.5 million euro, which is a little over 2.5 million US dollars. Grimlaw Games have proven to make good games and they use Titan Quest 1 as a first reference point. In other words, they want to capture the vibe of the old game and expand on many things that this game did well. There will be a mastery system as in Titan Quest 1. It has been confirmed that the essential aspect of building your hero, the mastery combination system, will be used in Titan Quest 2 as well. In the previous game, the system works like this. By killing monsters and completing quests, you receive experience. Once you hit a certain threshold, you level up. Per level up, you receive two stat points and three skill points. You can allocate the stat points in either strength, dexterity, intelligence, health or mana. A melee hero needs a lot of strength and dexterity. A caster hero needs a lot of intelligence and only basic levels of dexterity. A ranged hero needs to focus on dexterity and so on. The skill points that you could allocate on each level up is what truly shapes your hero. You first have to choose the mastery that you start with. On higher levels, you can pick another mastery. To activate skills for your hero, you need to invest points in the stats thermometer on the left. These give you stat points and health or mana bonuses. The higher the thermometer is leveled, the more skills you could activate. The combination of masteries is a very important aspect of Titan Quest 1 and maybe this system will be used exactly like described in Titan Quest 2. I want to give you a quick example on how to build a hero with this system. Let's say you found a bow with awesome fire damage bonuses. You decide to make a build around that. So you pick a mastery that supports archer skills. You invest a lot of stat points towards dexterity to increase the damage you deal with arrows. To make your bow even more powerful, you pick a second mastery that supports fire damage. That way, you increase both your normal arrow damage as well as the fire bonuses on your bow. Titan Quest 2 only in Greece. The game's setting will only be in Greece. Unlike Titan Quest 1, which had many other locations like Egypt, China, Northern Europe, Titan Quest 2 will play out in Greece only. This is no downside at all, because the Greece landscape offers lots of variety. There are beaches, woodlands, rocky areas, 
caves, meadows, mountains and many more in Greece. So I don't think the country where the game will play out will matter that much. The world will be built by hand. The game will run without procedural generation, which is when the level puts itself together at random on each startup of the game. This was the case with Diablo 2 for example. Titan Quest 2 will not be like that, so every path, every area will be created manually by the developers. They intend to give the player a feeling of exploration by making the levels realistic, but also include typical ancient Greece landmarks. A lot of statues, olive trees and so on come to mind. You can interact with the world. You can discover new paths and explore hidden areas by removing obstacles or finding hidden passages. This will give the player a feeling of being an explorer that discovers the area, unveiling its secrets while fighting off hordes of monsters. You will be able to jump off ledges to access new areas and you will also be able to climb ladders. Items, pre and suffixes. There will be a system to add random pre and suffixes to your items. It hasn't been described in detail, so part of this explanation is my best guess. It had to be, since the official announcement has been vague. Items in most ARPGs, action role-playing games, have a prefix and a suffix. The prefix is before the item name and the suffix is after the item name. Let's say you have a sword. You find a sword with both a prefix and a suffix. A fiery sword of fervor. Fiery is the prefix and it adds fire damage. Of fervor is the suffix and this adds attack speed. In Titan Quest 2 there will be a system that enables you to assign random pre and suffixes to an item. Maybe this will be possible by using a valuable scroll. We don't know. All we know is that this system was already in Titan Quest 1, but here it was at a very late stage of the game where you completed a difficult quest. As a reward you could improve a legendary item. This item's bonuses were left intact, but a random pre and suffix was added. This made some items insanely powerful when you rolled some lucky bonuses. This could be done only once per playthrough in Titan Quest 1. In the upcoming game, this will probably be possible a couple of times. There will be a multiplayer. A multiplayer game option has been confirmed. Honestly, on my first run on games like this, I like to go alone, look at everything at my own pace and talk to NPCs and set up my character without any hurry. Once I get the hang of it, I like to run these games with other people. This can be really fun, especially if your heroes synergize well with each other. It is no big surprise that there will be a multiplayer mode. But considering that the multiplayer of Titan Quest 1 is already super fun, we can all look forward to some nice multiplayer action in Titan Quest 2. The graphics will be good. Unreal 5 engine. A lot of people don't like the Unreal 5 engine. They have the example that Fortnite and games like Remnant don't run smoothly and that the game stutters. It seems you need a good PC to have the game run well without issues. Titan Quest will need at least 32 GB of RAM and also a good CPU and a decent graphics card, this one is for sure. Let's go back to the Unreal 5 engine. When used well, it can produce incredibly realistic looking graphics. I'm sure the developers know what they are doing and will produce a game that looks decent, considering that all the screenshots that they have shown so far look really good. The monster factions will fight in an organized manner. 
In the April update, the devs explained how the monster types, aka factions, fight together in groups where each individual has its own role and reacts differently to fighting conditions. For example, the fishman monsters, also called the Ichtians, have wizards that can channel a healing spell on their strongest ally. Ichtians have weak fodder soldiers, brutes with active attack skills or hunters that can dash or throw their spear. Other monster factions like boarmen, satyrs, centaurs, harpies, etc. will have their own combat doctrine, making the combat quite possibly intriguing. The player will have to adapt to each situation and the estimated strength of each monster camp. You can develop strategies against each faction, but will it work for a sword and shield hero the same as when you play a caster hero? Probably not, and this opens up the gameplay for more strategies that you have to come up with, making it more interesting. When you get killed, the entire encounter gets reset. In Titan Quest 1, this was handled differently. When you died in the old game, you were resurrected at your nearest spawn point, a fountain. Each monster you killed so far stayed dead, so you could pick up where you left off. For Titan Quest 2, this will not be the case. If a group of monsters has slain you and you manage to kill two of them, these two will be resurrected at your next encounter, which adds a little more difficulty. It also makes deaths count a bit more than in the previous game. You can invoke rituals to raise the difficulty. This was mentioned in an update only in one brief sentence, so you might not have noticed that piece of information. It was very easy to miss. It was just mentioned that you have the option to invoke rituals to make the game more difficult, but the developers didn't elaborate on that and kept it vague. It will most likely be similar to the feature that THQ Nordic added quite recently to Titan Quest 1. Here you could go to a certain temple where you could activate curses on you. These gave you debuffs, but also gained you Electrum coins for each monster kill. With a big amount of Electrum, you had the chance to buy legendary items. We can expect something like this, only instead of Cursets, it's named Rituals. Mini bosses can be re-summoned. This is also new and it makes a significant change to Titan Quest 1, where you couldn't do such a thing. The question you might be asking yourself, why should I even resummon mini bosses and fight it over again? It's for the rewards, which may be reaped again and again. This would make a good way to level up your character on short term, when you need to be stronger for the next encounter. Just go back to the mini boss, kill it a bunch of times, and return with stronger items and more experience, possibly a higher level. And with this, we reached the end of this video. Please let me know whether you found this informative. I will be on the lookout for each new piece of Titan Quest 2 news and I can't wait for the game to come out so that I can make game mechanic explanations, strategy guides, hero build guides and item explanation videos. Stay tuned for more Titan Quest 2 news. Please drop a like and write a comment to boost the algorithm if you want to help me out. Thanks for watching and thank you for your support. Titan Sage out.